Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well. So the time has come for me to do one of my very favorite videos of the year. Today we are going to be exploring my list of the very best TV shows of 2021. This is a tradition that I have on my channel where we dive into 10, <laughs> 10 uh, TV shows that I particularly enjoyed this past year. And I am so, so excited to share my list with you guys today because this past year has seen some brilliant TV hit the small screen. I mean, we have already been living in a golden age of TV for a while now, but honestly, it feels like with each passing year, things are just getting better and better and better. And so it's getting harder and harder to make this list as the years go on. But I managed to narrow down my options as somehow I may have cheated a little bit, not gonna lie. <laughs> sprinkled in a few couple of options that I wasn't supposed to but I managed to narrow it down and we are going to be diving into the shows that are featured in this year's list but before we get into all that good stuff just a couple of disclaimers okay first of all <laughs> I of course was not able to catch every single tv show that came out in 2021 like that would be literally impossible try as I might okay and so if there are any shows that you feel is just like grossly missing like just horrifically absent from this list and of course you can go ahead and share them down below let everyone else know what we should check out from this past year of amazing tv and of course i would also love to see you guys's lists down in the comments as well i would love to see what you guys found to be the very best that tv had to offer in 2021 and the second disclaimer isn't really much of a disclaimer but it's just to say that you know a lot of these tv shows that i have watched Thankfully, I did do reviews on <laughs> throughout the year, which means that this video isn't going to be diving into these shows in much detail at all, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, okay, I talk a lot, so fingers crossed. But if you do want to hear more of my thoughts on these TV shows that are featured on this list, then you can go ahead and check out my TV show reviews playlist. And now all that's left to say is that as per usual, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. But now, without further ado, let's get into my list of the very best TV shows of 2021. So today we're starting off not at number 10, but at number 15, because yes, I had to add five more. <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry, like, guys, please, please. I tried my best to keep it at 10 and then I was looking at my list like this is incomplete, okay? This is not the truth. This is a lie. So I had to extend it to 15. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to be going through all 15 okay I'm going to speed through the bottom five um a lot of these I already have reviews on so like I said you can go ahead and check out those relevant videos if you're interested to hear more of my thoughts but at number 15 we have what we do in the shadows season three at number 14 we have insecure season five RIP to that tv show it will be sorely missed and I do have a review of that one that you can check out at number 13 we have Ted Lasso season two. At number 12, we have WandaVision. <laughs> Oh, um, listen, okay, that's gonna shock a lot of you guys. Yes, WandaVision is at number 12. Listen, okay, all of the shows on this list are top tier. All of the shows on this list are just creme de la creme. Like, we're talking just the best of the very best that this year had to offer, at least in my opinion. So it's not an insult to WandaVision for it to be featured as number 12 on this list. But there's just some other shows that I enjoyed more. I feel like with WandaVision... Listen, I'm not even going to go through... No, no, no. <laughs> we're not doing the Mephisto. We're not doing that again, okay? I have a whole playlist for WandaVision specifically. You can go ahead and check it out. And I do have a video talking about all of the theories surrounding the show and perhaps what led to its ultimate somewhat downfall for the finale so you can go ahead and check out that video as well if you're curious to see why I wasn't quite as elated by the finale as some may have been but it is at number 12 because it's still an excellent tv show and finally at number 11 we have Pose season 3 again RIP to that show as well it was truly brilliant and it will be sorely missed and so now we're getting into the top 10 
<laughs> now we're getting into the top 10 tv shows of the year but you know like i said we couldn't omit the other five like now you see why i had to include them there's no way i couldn't include them guys <laughs> okay so at number 10 we have succession season three so this is one of the very few shows that you haven't heard me talk about at all <laughs> in any capacity because everything else pretty much i've mentioned here and there but succession season three was excellent and like to no one's surprise <laughs> no one's surprise whatsoever okay that series is consistently excellent and after the bombastic season finale of season two we were all waiting with bated breath to see how they would follow it up with season three and for the most part i think it absolutely landed i think every single second almost was brilliantly executed as a follow-up to what we saw in season two i feel like the whole character arcs that were explored here especially with kendall shiv and tom those three <laughs> those three got up to some shenanigans this season okay with kendall being so high on his own source like he really thought that he was that guy he really thought that he was our lord and savior kendall roy please give me a break <laughs> please give me a break like he was delusional he actually thought that he did something like oh that's mm. but then in the end there to see how far he fell wow just after one conversation with his father to see how far he fell that was that was shocking that whole character arc was just incredibly well executed and of course we have jeremy strong portraying the character expertly so of course his performance was phenomenal throughout then we have shiv shiv was just such a mm, sketchy character as well i think this series really reveals the kind of inner feelings that she has especially in regards to her marriage with tom and tom trying to dig at it tom trying to really get to the root of you know what is there in their marriage what is there in their relationship and that ultimately may have led to shiv's demise when tom saw nothing like he dug and he dug looking for gold and saw nothing he came up empty and so in the end when tom makes a decision that he does even though it's shocking and even though you're like what I, I didn't know he had it in him but it makes sense it makes sense when you follow the through line of his and shiv's character arcs throughout this season i mean oh, i could go on and on <laughs> but the writing on this series is superb and i feel like you know for a pandemic series okay a show that was filmed during the pandemic i feel like they did a really good job of keeping up the dynamic the keeping up the dynamicism of the series to make it feel energetic even though a lot of the time they are confined to these rooms <laughs> like these boardrooms or maybe kendall's house or something um sometimes it does feel like it's very small but the characters are larger than life so they more than make up for it okay so next up at number nine we have yet another hbo gem in mayor of east town now this is a series that i do have a full review on so you can go ahead and check it out if you want to hear my thoughts on this show but i thought it was like truly brilliant like oh as i said before hbo has that special source hbo done right has that special kind of crack has that <laughs> special kind of source in there that just makes you so hooked to their programming like you are latching on to every single word in every single scene in every single episode like how do they do that it's genius it's masterful and in the case of mayor of east town yes it could have been yet another you know lost white girl in a small town story but they did something different here it, it was the flavor there was something else here first of all the world building was just so incredible that the whole world the whole small town surrounding these characters just felt so authentic even down to the costuming like i don't usually watch the behind the scenes hbo segments at the end of the episodes but i did catch a few of these because i was interested especially with kate winslet kind of going through the process and seeing the attention to detail in the costuming just creating these holes this wear and tear to make it feel authentic stuff like that to me just really helped with the world building of the show but then of course we have the characters themselves portrayed by brilliant actors i mean kate winslet 
Kate Winslet giving one of her best performances of her whole career in a TV show. Of course it was going to get the world's attention. Of course it was going to get the world's attention. She was great. She was phenomenal. Oh my goodness. She definitely gave one of the best performances of the entire year easily. And even though, <laughs> even though my heart is still gunning for, you know, someone else to win, which we'll talk about in a second when it comes to the category of best actress in a limited series for the Golden Globes, I wouldn't be surprised even for a millisecond if Kate ends up snagging that award as well alongside her Emmy from earlier last year. So Mayor of Easttown was definitely a sleeper hit but I feel like because of the excellent performances, the excellent world building and the writing as well, the building of this mystery was so expertly done that we were hooked from week to week and not only were we hooked on a weekly basis but the finale, <laughs> the finale delivered and gave us one of the perfect most brilliant endings to a story that we saw in the entire year okay so next up at number eight we have a very controversial entry i'm sure to some with marvel's falcon and the winter soldier now i know okay i am fully aware that a lot of you guys prefer loki one division you know hawkeye some of the other mcu disney plus series that we got this past year over falcon and the winter soldier it doesn't seem to be a fan favorite for whatever reason i don't understand personally <laughs> i i can't relate personally to that sentiment because i thought it was excellent i thought it was brilliant like literally it blew my mind at times honestly and i think it is largely because of this this concept of the mcu delving into like real world issues but specifically real world issues that affect me on a daily basis like talking about issues of racism you know themes of discrimination and incorporating that into mcu law giving us characters like Isaiah Bradley and telling his story that is very much connected in the real world and you know real life history when it comes to scientific experimentation on black people in America that blew my mind that really did blow my mind and that held a lot more weight to me than some of the shortcomings of the series like the flag smashers <laughs> I made it no secret that I despised the villains of the show like they just uh, the best villain on the show was Zemo by far in fact I feel bad because I don't give him the credit that he's due <laughs> because I'm always talking about how bad the flag smashers were that I forget to mention how excellent Zemo was in the end although I did very much enjoy him being part of the gang the trio <laughs> with Bucky and Sam like I just wanted them to be a team for a little bit longer I thought they were great together but yeah the whole series I mean of course at the center of it we have the Falcon and the Winter Soldier themselves who were pretty much well known because of their very short but very memorable appearance in a uh, civil war where they made a really great impression with fans as well as of course Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan's interviews during press where they left a great impression on fans as well like with their excellent chemistry <laughs> like when you have the chemistry when you have the spice everyone can see it okay and definitely warranted a tv show of their own and I think they really shone in that series and like I said some of those real world aspects being incorporated into the MCU and explored on a more you know deeper personal level especially in the case of Sam Wilson was very much welcomed to me you know I very much enjoyed you know the bigger wackier you know more comic booky um aspects of the MCU especially in phase four with the multiverse and everything like that's all very fun but I also like the fact that there is this corner of the MCU that's a little bit more grounded a little bit more personal and more relatable and that's something that we saw with this series okay so next up at number seven we have squid game now you may never have heard of squid game before it was this very niche south korean tv show on netflix that like barely anyone watched but i really enjoyed it <laughs> like i decided to check it out just on a whim okay just because i saw it on the netflix homepage, and i, I enjoyed it quite a bit um yeah no obviously i'm joking this was like the biggest thing ever <laughs> <laughs> what like who who would have predicted who would have predicted that this south korean series about playground games would dominate the world as it did no one <laughs> literally no one listen we're all still coming off of that high of 2019's parasite winning the academy award for best picture so like maybe it didn't come out of nowhere but it sure did come out of nowhere <laughs> especially in the depths of netflix like the fact that this show made such 
such an impression on the world is incredible and this goes to show you know something that I have been talking about you know frequently um, especially when it comes to these foreign series on Netflix blowing up across the globe is that that's one of the benefits of the streaming platform being so international is that now we get to see all of these shows from all around the world and some of them really break through and have a huge audience globally and that's something that we didn't traditionally see with you know the old style the traditional style of cable tv but now the internet and streaming have broadened our horizons in ways that we never could have imagined and tv shows like squid game and you know money heist have truly benefited from this phenomena and it's been extraordinary to see how huge and how massive the following of these shows has gotten but in terms of the show itself i think what was the cherry on top of the already impressive sunday is that it's actually a good show <laughs> <laughs> like it's actually a great show like we love to see it now the big question is <laughs> the big question is season two <laughs> season two like will season two reach the heights of season one or will it fall under will it fall flat that remains to be seen okay i'm sure that's something that is circulating in the writer's mind in the creator's mind um after seeing the huge success the show ended up being but a uh, good luck to him okay <laughs> good luck to him i didn't have the answer to that question but we shall see in the meantime squid game season one is always available on netflix ain't going anywhere anytime soon now speaking of netflix oh now there is a streaming service that is after my own heart after my own heart there used to be a time when i thought i could live without netflix now i feel like paying netflix every month counts as a utility bill like am i the only one <laughs> like paying netflix is like paying for water paying for electricity gas internet like you just pay for netflix as part of your utilities but another gem that i managed to check out from the platform was number six is young royals this might be a series that some of you guys haven't checked out yet i would highly recommend you do i do not have a review of the show on my channel but let me just tell you this it is superb oh my goodness like i i kept seeing it advertised and i was like hmm, this looks interesting but it was like a teen drama series and i was like oh, you know i've had a bit of enough of those like I'm a, I'm a little bit sick of those at the moment mm, it's not really my favorite at the moment okay i'm moving away from the teen drama era in my life and you know that's okay that's fine i don't begrudge them whatsoever but it needs to be exceptional for me to check it out um guess what young reels is exceptional <laughs> young royals is exceptional so the story basically centers on the swedish royal family and you have this young prince who is made to go to this boarding school full of you know all of these posh aristocratic well-to-do um students who come from these kinds of uh, privileged backgrounds because of course he's a prince he's not going to like a state school okay but he has to kind of navigate the waters in this new school you know making some friends making some enemies people being really interested in in getting to know the prince and trying to manipulate their way to him because of course he's a prince like no matter how rich you are royalty has that special flavor at least in these societies so you see some students try to take advantage of this and trying to get into his inner circle but then the prince falls in love with this like humble guy like oh he's so adorable and you know he's there because he's on like a scholarship i believe and he also gets money from selling his dad's drugs it's this classic tale of like you know opposites attract where the prince comes from this very privileged background and then you have this guy who's uh, from a very humble background and he doesn't have a lot of money he's not used to the world of the ultra rich and powerful but he's kind of thrust into it by being in proximity to them at this school and it's just a really interesting series that really delves into this kind of topic in a very realistic grounded way like it's not a crazy fairy tale hallmark movie or tv show like it, it really is so grounded and real and raw down to the characters you know this is a small thing but the actors themselves they're not like 
Hollywood perfect. Like the actors have like acne on their skin. They have imperfect complexions. You know, some of them are plus size. Some of them, you know, they just look like regular people. And I feel like because this is a foreign series, by the way, this is a Swedish show. Because it is a series that doesn't come from Hollywood, it doesn't have that kind of, you know, airbrush effect to it. And it just feels more raw and realistic. And I loved this take. I loved it. I can't do justice to this series in the two seconds that I have to talk about it here but I would highly recommend you check out Young Royals if you haven't yet already. Okay so before we dive into my top five picks I did just want to slot in here an in memoriam. Yes <laughs> we are going to commemorate the TV shows that we lost in 2021 and actually I think I forgot to do this in 2020 as well so we're going to slot in some 2020 picks as well but these are shows that will be sorely missed. We have Insecure, Pose, oh, Oh, just heartbreaking tv shows that really broke barriers they were revolutionary in their spaces and yeah i am really sad to see both of them go so let's just go ahead and take a moment of silence to appreciate the shows that we lost these last couple of years okay right so now <laughs> now let's get into number five at number five where we have loki yes this is you know spoiler alert the highest ranking mcu disney plus series that i have on my list i do think that loki was the superior show that we got in the mcu disney plus lineup in 2021 and oh boy was it a lineup like i said like i enjoyed every single one of those shows I thought they were all brilliant but I had to rank them somehow <laughs> and Loki comes out on top because even though it's not perfect boy does it get a lot of things right okay this introduction into the idea of a multiverse and also the time variance authority listen that is a fascinating concept that is a fascinating concept and I hope that they explore that even further in season two because honestly like I could watch a whole show just exploring that the inner workings of the time variance authority quite frankly but then we also got the re-entry of Tom Hiddleston's Loki in the MCU a beloved character Character amongst fans and like rightfully so he's one of the best villains that the MCU ever had like there I said it okay so we were really excited to see Loki re-enter the franchise and he came out on top this past year and I have reviews for each and every one of the episodes so if you want to hear my thoughts on some of them then you can go ahead and check those reviews out but you know it, it's just a great show <laughs> what can I say it's a great show okay so now we're in the top four and honestly I'm looking at this list now and it's kind of crazy <laughs> it's kind of crazy like I, I feel like this order could be switched around still I've been switching it around for the last few days but honestly I feel like more than any other year that I've been doing these videos this year was just impossible to have a number one like I feel like I was able to get my favorites in a list of 15 <laughs> but um when it comes to the number one slot like I don't know so far I have one option but it could honestly be changed like that like honestly any one of these shows could be number one in any other year but it was just such a strong year so I had I have to order it somehow okay but at number four we have my guy Mark Grayson himself in Invincible yes absolutely did you did you forget did you forget because <laughs> I didn't did you did you forget the incredible the bombastic the insane series that was invincible because i sure did not forget a single second of it that show was incredible that that show was invincible i just uh, I, I have no words i honestly have no words it was easily the best animated series that we got in the whole year and we've got a season of rick and morty this year that's not even on this list unfortunately still a, a pretty good uh, season but it wasn't the strongest from the show if we're being honest but invincible just like overtook him invincible was like oh you're leaving a slot open for best animated show of the year let me just slide in there <laughs> let me just whoop, slide in there um, and that's exactly what happened because invincible was absolutely the best animated series of the year you watch the first episode of invincible and you think you know 
you you th- oh you think you know <laughs> you think you understand oh that's so cute but then we get to the halfway point where the credits are up and you're like hold up hold up like is my amazon prime not working like what's going on is my internet faulty what's happening here and then you see the credits go black they fade to black and we have more to see and it's in, it's in that episode already that we're like oh hold on this is not this is not what we thought it was this, this is something different this is something mm. <laughs> we have something different here honestly invincible from the very beginning from the very first episode knocked it out of the park and then you want to talk about strong finales was there a stronger finale than that of Invincible season one? I sh- I question. Was there? <laughs> because that finale was insane. It's still it still stuck with me to this day. It's st- like when I think about that finale, I'm like, oh, what did I what did I witness? I'm still not over it. And it's been almost a year. Explain that. That is good writing. That is an excellent TV show. I'm so excited about Invincible season two, season three. Please keep it going, okay? Because I feel like. This this series was just such a gem and Amazon absolutely struck gold with this property. Okay so now we're officially in the top three but like I said these top four were like really interchangeable like any one of them could be number one in a different year but at number three we have Lupe. <laughs> we have Lupe. Oh wow like wow wow look at the smile on my face when Netflix gives me excellent content like I said Netflix is a utility bill as far as I'm concerned like I can't get rid of Netflix now not when they gave me Lupe. <laughs> not when they gave me Young Royals, Lupe, Squid Game like what am I what am I supposed to do and in fact the next two on my list are also Netflix series I'm stuck I'm literally stuck in a life bond with Netflix because I, I literally just can't unsubscribe from them now but yes number three is Lupe another series that I reviewed on my channel first of all Omar Sy just being the most charismatic actor just ever this whole year <laughs> this whole year he was incredible as the character and also the writing in the series especially for season one because Loki Lupe actually had two seasons I was kind of confused because I think it might be the French way of writing it where they said that it was you know part one and part two so I assumed that that meant it was one season in two parts but no like technically it's two seasons um but still I feel like the first part was definitely better especially because it was such a shock and surprise but even the second part even the second part at the very end there where there were some surprises there I just felt like it was so perfectly executed because the thing is when you have a character like Lupe or Sherlock they need to be written very smartly you they have to be several steps ahead of you for it to work for it to be convincing and so you have to have really smart writers and in the case of Lupe they absolutely did you know that is the tricky part when it comes to writing the these intelligent characters that are always 10 steps ahead of everyone and they absolutely nailed it and of course with Omar Sy's performance at the forefront here you have this you know French series with a black a black lead what only in 2021 <laughs> It was extraordinary. Lupe was a whole cultural phenomenon. I don't even care. <laughs> okay, so next up at number two, we have Made. So yes, this is yet another Netflix series. As I said, Netflix has my wallet in a chokehold. It ain't going anywhere. <laughs> but Made was just a series that truly just blew me away, especially because of the area of work that I'm involved in. It's something that I can very much relate to um, with my work. And I feel like it was done so, so well. The subject matter was explored so so well in a very authentic realistic way um, and that is a subject matter of you know having this woman and this young mother escaping abuse and domestic violence and they just did a phenomenal job of telling this story about this young mother who has so many hurdles um, against her and she's just trying to find a way to survive with her daughter and she's just thrown all kinds of obstacles on her way 
and it's just heartbreaking to see and it's, it's heartbreaking to see when there are setbacks but it's very heartwarming when she manages to get through them um this whole show is an emotional roller coaster especially if it's such a, a touchy subject for anyone who experiences this or for anyone who knows anyone who's experienced this i just feel like this series is such a, a great job of exploring this very serious issue and i think the performances here are you kidding which reminds me yeah that's the actress that i was talking about when it comes to the battle between her and uh, kate winslet margaret quayley margaret quayley should absolutely walk away with the golden globe in my opinion or if not the golden globe this year then at least the um emmys later on this year because i think she was truly spectacular in this series you know all of the performances here were great and overall the series just had excellent writing exploring this cross-section between abuse and young motherhood and the struggles of dealing with all of that alongside also being poor also <laughs> being poor as hell and literally having to count every single penny in your account and literally watching it decrease as you make these very difficult decisions about what to do about the survival of yourself and your child okay so now drum roll please it's time to reveal my number one choice although like i said the top four are really number ones interchangeably and like this list could change within the next second <laughs> um but you know as it stands at number one we have sex education season three um yeah this show is great this mm, this show is great like i said another netflix joint like this show is excellent to me what makes sex education stand apart from the other girls just for this second okay just as i'm you know i'm feeling in that mood right now um is how well they tackle the diversity how okay because we've seen this trend in hollywood where they try to do the you know diversity in these young teen dramas and they're trying to make up for decades upon decades of lack of diversity so it's like just throwing a bunch of beige people on the screen <laughs> beige people on the screen and various shades of beige and just calling it a day like oh we've done our job now we're progressive i guess but sex education does something different it creates characters that are nuanced that are interesting that are charismatic as hell and portrayed by excellent actors and also characters that come from all different walks of life that you actually get to explore in the show and that's all within one season sex education is simply some of the best writing that we have seen ever not just in 2021 but truly Ever. this series is brilliantly written the series is brilliantly acted the characters actually feel like they are sixth formers they don't feel like 30 year olds who are pretending to be sixth formers who are pretending to be older teenagers no no, no we've left that behind first of all we left that behind like all around okay there are other tv shows like the sex lives of college girls and you know the new gossip girl there are a bunch of tv shows that are coming from you know this new generation of teen drama that have actors who actually look like teenagers as opposed to actors who look 40 <laughs> 50 who are portraying teenagers we've left that behind in the early 2000s thankfully but in the case of sex education not only do they look younger but they act authentically like teenagers they don't again have that hollywood veil which i think hollywood should really do away with because it's not helping with the authenticity of their storytelling anyways um so there's that about sex education and then you know i've already spoken about the the stylistic choices of the series the fact that it really does stand apart from anything else within the teen drama sector <laughs> the ocean of teen dramas that we have with the costuming choices as well as the portrayals of technology in the series it feels like the show is quite timeless in a lot of ways because characters are dressed like they're from the 80s and the 90s and the technology seems to be antiquated but at the same time there are definitely some more modern um, references throughout the show again just adding to that 
timeless quality of the show overall. And then another thing that really makes this series stand out from the crowd is the subject matter itself, you know, exploring sex education. Now, again, there was that new HBO series, The Sex Lives of College Girls, that seems to also explore this, but not in the same way as sex education. <laughs> because sex education, first and foremost, is about education. It's not just about flaunting the sex lives of young people. And, you know, instead it exposes the awkwardness, the lack of knowledge, you know, just the insecurities surrounding sex and young people's sex lives. And I feel like that is so refreshing and new and something that we haven't really seen in the scene, <laughs> in the ocean of uh, teen dramas, of teen dramedies. And speaking of dramedies, the show is funny. The show is hilarious as hell. Are you kidding me? Sex Education is so, so funny. It's literally one of the best comedies that I'm watching right now. And on top of all of this, as if that wasn't already enough, we have some iconic characters. You already know who I'm going to say. Like, it's Eric Effiong. You know, three seasons in a row, <laughs> he is unseated as the VIP of this show, in a show that already has some incredible characters all around. That is so impressive. But in this season, we got to see him in the motherland. In this season, we got to see him go to Nigeria and have this, like, spiritual, sexual awakening. And honestly, I love that for him. It was amazing. It was an amazing character arc. And all throughout the series, we had some amazing writing amazing costuming and amazing performances that truly I think make it worthy to be called the very best TV show of 2021. Okay so that's it from me now that I told you guys my list of the best TV shows of 2021 it's time for you guys to let me know what your lists are down in the comments below you know I'm so curious to hear your thoughts as well on my list and whether you agree or disagree <laughs> I think there'll be a few in here that you'll you know vehemently disagree with but let me know down in the comments anyway please be sure to subscribe to catch you videos coming up thank you guys so so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one bye